Today, Derek and I are breaking down the 2021 Clemson recruiting class. We're going to be going through each member of this class, breaking down our thoughts as fans of Clemson football on how we feel like these players are going to fit in to the Clemson culture and the Clemson program moving into next season. Again, we're just two Clemson grads that love nothing more to talk a little bit more about Clemson football. So stay tuned, stick with us, help us out, like and subscribe as we break down the Clemson 2021 recruiting class. Uh, let's go ahead and move on over to the next recruit. Uh, another one that I definitely want to talk about is Jake Brinningstool. He's He's a four-star tight end out of Brentwood, basically just south of Nashville, Tennessee. Number one overall tight end for this class. Number one player from the state of Tennessee. Uh, and then number 59 overall player in the country. He's a big target. He's 6'5". He's only 215, so he can add 30 more pounds onto that frame. Uh, and again, like Will Shipley, he's already enrolled in school. He's there in January. Eric, give me a word that describes Jake Brinningstool in your mind. All right, I'm going to go back to back old players for my, my one word. But my one word for uh, for Jake is Jordan Leggett. Leggett. I'm thinking back to the times of Deshaun Watson, our first national championship in forever in 2016, when we had Deshaun Watson and Leggett connection to beat Alabama. This kid reminds me of that. We need to get, we talked about it all year this year, that we needed to get back to that tight end play. And we have Galloway, we've got Shark, we got Davis, um, we've got good tight ends. And Jake Brinningstool is another add to this. He's the best tight end in the class. And we have a new tight end coach this year. So super excited to see how he plugs in. I, you know, the tape on this guy, he's long, he catches with his hands. He needs to work on his route running and his blocking. He needs to add some weight. But I think he's going to be a big player for Clemson in the future. What's your one word, Derek? So mine, uh, when we were doing this a week or two ago, uh, this this company had a much better rap uh, than they do today, but it's just quickly how things change. My word for him was Robin Hood, and that was in reference to uh, the investor trading app because a few weeks ago, everyone had a positive view on this, but basically Robin Hood came in and over the course of 2020, changed the way that investment really happened in the stock market because it was all of a sudden you had you know, uh, you could do free trades. It was at the palm of your hand. You could do it while just sitting on the couch and it just changed the way you looked at it. And that's what I kind of think of Jake Brenningstool. Like he changes the way you look at the tight end position because the athleticism and the size that he brings to it, uh, it's not necessarily something we've had at the tight end position, even since Jordan Leggett. I, I, looking at this guy, looking at the tape, I think this guy's a better athlete than Jordan Leggett was. I think he's just more dynamic. Um, you mentioned the fact that the tight end coach, you know, first year in this position, uh, then this year coming up, I, again, another test. I talk about Will Shipley is a great opportunity. It's also a test for Tony Elliott. Same thing with Jake Brenningstool. Uh, if there was ever a year that the tight end should have had a big year, it's this year. You had holes not opening up for Travis Etienne. You had wide receivers going down left and right. Uh, and in, instead of leaning on a pretty deep, talented, and mature tight end group, you, you really didn't. You just kept going to Amari Rogers uh, and some of our other wide receivers that we were just plugging and playing. So I'm nervous, and maybe that's why we have a new tight end coach, but I would like to see tight ends way more involved. But if last year's an indication, I'm a little nervous about the future. Yeah, I, I, I don't know how you don't get this guy involved. I mean, you said it, right. 6'5", 215. He's going to add 15 to 20 pounds pretty much immediately when he comes into Clemson because we have one of the best athletic facilities in the country, and this is what we do. I, I, I think the other big thing for Jake is that DJ Uyangale is more of a pro-style quarterback than Trevor was. Mm-hmm. I mean, Trevor was a pro-style quarterback. Don't get me wrong. He sat in the pocket. He made throws. But Trevor made a lot of his big plays using his feet, getting out of the pocket, or breaking long runs. And I'm not saying that DJ can't do that. What I'm saying is that DJ wants to throw the ball. You watched the Notre Dame game this year where Trevor had COVID and, and, and DJ stepped up. He threw for over 400 yards. While being banged up with a hurt shoulder, he did not run that much. This kid loves to throw, he can throw, and Jake Brinningstool is a huge target for him. I'm excited, and I really hope, like you said, that Tony Elliott and the tight end coach can get him on the field and get him ready to play. Yeah, and I will say that I don't necessarily expect him to make a big impact his freshman year. Uh, we brought a talented uh, tight end last year. We have uh, all those tight ends that we talked about. You know, they're not necessarily going anywhere. We have Brandon Galloway. You know, he's still athletic and huge. 
Um, I, I would be surprised if Ringstool got a lot of playing time early on. It's a difficult position to translate from high school to college and college to the NFL. Um, he has to be able to block. He has to be able to go toe-to-toe with defensive ends. Um, he has to understand the route tree. So I'm not expecting him, unlike Will Shipley, who I think can come in and make a, make a splash right away, I'm expecting him to probably get in the weight room, add 10, 15 pounds, uh, learn more about the position, and then maybe the following year come out and have a bigger impact. And also because we have a lot of wide receivers who should be coming back. And Gata should be healthy. Lassen should be healthy. Um, Justin Ross is coming back. We've got EJ Williams. We have more players, you know, to talk about here. Um, I would expect him to make a larger presence later on, even though he is a wildly talented recruit. Yeah, I agree Agree with that statement that we might not see him day one. We might not even see him his sophomore year in totality. <laughs> I mean, I see him as a player that – we see at the spring game, we see him play those four games that you're allowed to play during your freshman year, and I potentially see him being redshirted because why not? I mean, if you're only going to use him for four games and get him ready for the next year, let's add another year of eligibility by giving him that red shirt. Because uh, you're right, there's so much to learn from high school to college. You know, we can watch film and all that stuff, but at 6'5", 215, you're not blocking Chase Young's. You know, like, you're just not. So <laughs> it's, it's going to take some time to develop him. That's what Clemson does. Excited about his future, though. I mean, people in the NFL uh, who are grown men couldn't even block Chase Young. So, yeah, yeah, I get your point. That's our breakdown. If you enjoy our content, help us out. Like, subscribe to our channel, add a comment below. We'll be breaking down every single 2020 recruit from the 2021 Clemson class in the near future. So check out the Tiger Football Talk YouTube channel and go Tigers.